Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns they're selling in their April of 2016 premiere auction. And we have a neat one here that is a sporting rifle with some interesting US military testing history behind it. So this rifle was manufactured by the Walther Company. And it was manufactured probably sometime in the early 1930s. We know for sure from the proof marks it was made between 1893 and 1939. The proof mark is early enough that we know it was um, basically pre-Nazi era. Um, however, exactly where it was in the 1930s is a little hard to say. However, what's neat about the background of this rifle is that the, exact, that the design, the mechanical system, was patented by a guy named Carl Heinemann. And initially, these were manufactured by the Rheinmetall Corporation out of Switzerland. And in, uh, the, the patent was done in 1927. 1928, Rheinmetall manufactured a couple examples, and they sent one to the United States for military testing. And it was tested in 1929 as part of the US government's ongoing uh, search for a self-loading military rifle. And in US testing, it didn't work out well enough. Um, they had a number of problems with the rifle and it broke some parts. You know, this was the military version, it wasn't quite up to it. Then something happened, and I don't know exactly what, and then we see Walther manufacturing this one. Now this is serial number 1001, which is the very first one that Walther produced, and there's very little data on these, and they probably didn't make very many of them. It was not a, a successful design for the Walther company either. What I suspect, can't prove it, but this would be my guess, is that Heinemann had this contract with Rheinmetall and after the failure of US military tests and probably some failures in other military tests, uh, the Rheinmetall company was probably no longer interested and Heinemann took his design and licensed it to Walther for sporting rifle production instead. So the mechanics of this gun are really cool. They're, they're very distinctive of the early semi-auto rifles. This is a bang style of gas system, meaning there's no gas port in the barrel, instead uh, gas comes out the muzzle and then it gets captured by this muzzle cup which actually pulls forward and then there is a toggle locked bolt assembly at the back. So really cool design. In fact, why don't I bring the camera back here and let's show you guys that system all up close. So we have a Walther banner and a little bit of script but it's up here on the top of the receiver underneath the scope and I don't think I can get a good camera view of it. So we'll skip that for the moment. However, we do have a couple controls here to point out. One of them is the magazine release, which is this button on the bottom. Pull that back and it spits out your detachable box magazine. This is obviously a sporting rifle. Uh, I believe this is probably a three round magazine. Uh, the exact cartridge is not, does not appear to be marked anywhere on here. What we do know, the closest thing we know, is based on the proof marks. So here on the left side of the front of the receiver, we have a couple of German proof marks. Uh, the crown by itself is just a primary proof, and the crown N is a smokeless powder proof. And then that STMG is an abbreviation for a metal jacketed or a steel jacketed bullet, uh, as opposed to a solid lead bullet. And then it's marked 18.3 GR. That indicates 18.3 uh, grams, which translates into about 282 grains, and that would be the bullet weight. So we don't know the cartridge, but we know it had roughly a 282 grain bullet, and the bore measures approximately 10 and a half millimeter. So this would have been a, a fairly large sporting cartridge from the time. The last control that is relevant here, short of the bolt, which we'll get to next, is the safety. It's just a sliding thumb safety on the back of the wrist. So white or blank is safe and red is ready to fire. The bolt is a really cool toggle locked design and when we open it manually we have a little uh, depressible little spring loaded grip here. That allows us to open the bolt. If you don't depress that the bolt is locked because of course you want it locked when you fire off a 282 grain 10.5 millimeter bullet. Now if I depress that I can then pull this out and we have a toggle action here. So the idea is when this is closed, it acts like a knee joint and force on the front pushing backward won't open it up. Instead, it, it won't open until something cracks this joint open like so. So I can do that manually by depressing this lever 
or I can do it uh, automatically, which is the way the rifle does it. You can see that there's this triangular thing back here. What happens when you fire is that this is pulled forward and it hits this round protrusion, this round roller on the bottom of the bolt, and that pulls the bolt up like this. This is actually pretty similar to how the Luger toggle works. As the top end of a Luger slide reciprocates, the toggle knobs hit an angled piece on the back of the receiver like that, and that's what cracks the toggle joint open so that it can cycle. Now the thing that actually uh, forces that toggle to open is this muzzle cap. So what happens, in fact, actually, why don't I just take it apart? So taking apart the muzzle uh, assembly begins with opening this tab, which allows me to rotate the muzzle cap itself. You can see it's got this lug that dovetails into this. This is the front of the connecting arm. So without that being dovetailed in, I can take this right off the muzzle. So what we have here is a big fixed uh, front sight assembly, and there are lugs on the bolt which are going to control the travel of this block. So you can see that this cap comes basically right to the end of the muzzle on the rifle. Uh, this is obviously the end, and we have just this very narrow gap where this muzzle cap is actually catching gas right in there, and there's, it catches enough to push this forward. When this goes forward, because it's connected with this lug, then this operating rod pulls forward. That rod goes into the stock and it goes down under the stock all the way to the receiver here where it comes out from under this little metal shield and it forms our operating mechanism. So I'm going to put this back together and then demonstrate it for you. I'll line that up, close that little locking tab and then the spring in this is really quite stiff, but there we go. You can see that the muzzle cap can go forward a fairly significant distance just like that. So looking at the action, when I pulled this, you can see that that triangular block is moving forward and it cracks the bolt, the toggle action open just like that. Once once the action is fully forward like this, that bolt is open enough that inertia will cause it to cycle the rest of the way. So the Rheinmetall rifles that were used in US testing are probably long gone at this point. If they're not, there's only probably one of them around. And uh, this is a really cool example of a rifle that's uh, a little less expensive because it doesn't have the, the military specific military provenance, but it's a cool opportunity to have an example of that exact same action. And hey, you know, it's a gorgeous condition. Number one serial Walther sporting rifle, which is not uncool in its own right. Uh, this is, of course, coming up for sale here at Rock Island. If you'd like to own it yourself, take a look at the description uh, below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on the rifle, and you can look at their provenance and their description and uh, place a bid online if you're interested or come down here to the auction in person. Thanks for watching.